Hello? Dad, how are you? Devin, how's it going? Are you ready for PETA's painting podcast? I sure am. I sure am. All right. Well, right here. well let's ready? go. What we're okay. doing here, we talked to my dad, Peter McKee, and uh, over the sea came riding in on a bumblebee. You know how it goes, yep. Dad? You know how that oh, goes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Absolutely. Dad, dad is uh, 87 years old, and he is kicking. He has got it going. He paints. He reads. He rides <laughs> motorcycles. He uh, <laughs> throws darts. I mean, he's a man of many mysteries. And all the paintings featured are available for purchase. You just have to inquire in the comments. And the cool thing about that is you develop this personal relationship with my mom and my dad. They're a two for one right. deal there and uh, they get you going. So, right. Dad, we're going to talk about your paintings here in just a, a second. But first, what do you think about the Super Bowl, Dad? Where Where's your head out with the Super Bowl? I, I was, well, I, I see that you're hoping that the 49ers win the Swifty Bowl. Um, which I, is what I call it. And as you know, I'm right with you. I used to live in San Francisco, and I hope they trounce the Chiefs, beat them bad. I think they will. I think they will. Why did you, you live in San Francisco? Uh, well, it was kind of by accident. When I got out of the Army, a buddy of mine and I drove across the uh, country. And what was, his, what was his nickname that you gave him? The Vegetable. All right. And why did, why did you call him The Vegetable? Because he didn't talk very much. He was kind of a quiet guy, and uh, he didn't have much to say uh, in groups, mostly. He could talk to me, all right, but uh, in groups, he kind of shut up. So it was kind of a, a, a little joke name that we I gave him, but uh, he was a good traveling companion. He was another uh, guy that lived in the um, uh, right on the fort with me, and uh, he had to, he got out at the same time I did, and we both had about 50 days of vacation pay we hadn't used. So we used that to travel across the country. We took our time. Um, in fact, we spent about four days in the Denver area. I think we took about five weeks to cross the country. Um, went up to Central City and yeah. Colorado yeah. and uh, almost got killed up there. They they actually carried, this is back in the early 60s, they were carrying guns up there. And we were having a few brewskis and uh, playing uh, liars dice and ship captain crew. And I think we won too many little, uh, <laughs> too many, uh, games. And, uh, we thought they were going to beat us up. So we lost and got the hell out of there. We ran down, got down the mountain. I can, I can remember running down that mountain in the Sunbeam Alpine. That's what I own wow. uh, at about three o'clock in the morning, getting the hell out of, getting the hell out of central city. It was kind of scary. You, you I mean, have never, did. wait, you have never told me that story before. Oh, I thought I had. No. Oh my God! Yeah, it was it was one of the scariest nights of our life. the The next, the next most scariest uh, night was <clears throat> when we were out in uh, Oregon, in Eugene, Oregon, and we got <clears throat> we got in a um, it was kind of a restaurant bar, and we were eating, and then we were up to the bar, and up there you can play liars dice and ship captain crew and so forth, and in another instance we were winning, and we felt threatened by these guys they were tough like rancher type guys and uh so we purposely lost that so we got out of there okay but that was that was a couple of times we uh purposely lost uh the uh Bob Eddie. they don't do that here in the east coast they don't have the dice on the table i hope all right let, let me just back it. let me back up a second yeah you, yeah. You, you feel threatened for your life in central city playing some sort of dice game i've never heard of in my life yeah and uh sure, you're sure, captain crew you're, you're running out at 3 a.m and uh uh and then you're like oh my god we almost died and and then you go do it again well it was about four or five weeks later when we did it again in eugene oregon uh it just happened we were on a winning streak there i don't know why but uh, it was uh it was something i don't know if they still play these games uh out uh, out west but uh, they certainly don't here but it was it wow was, uh, we were young and stupid you know just uh having a good time driving out all right so was, you end up that's crazy um twice which is amazing that we do this podcast and i hear stories that i've never heard before but yeah but but like when would you tell your kid about your uh uh dice gambling drinking almost got <laughs> shot story like like at what point would you tell your like 10 year old hey darren i got a story for you 
<laughs> well, as that happened, I didn't tell you it. <laughs> all right. That well, was, it, was, it, it, you it, know, it, I had to, I had to use some maturity there. All right. So you get to San Francisco out of just like I don't know, whatever. Right? You just well, yeah. well, you did have to. You were still. <laughs> What was your status in the army at the time? And and you were in a really interesting time between the Korean War and Vietnam, right? I got. I guess oh, we should frame it up that way. Right, right in the middle of the, right in the middle of the uh, Vietnam War. Uh, what we did is uh, when when we got to San Francisco, we uh, kept we stayed there a few nights, then we kept going down to L.A. Didn't like the L.A. area, and uh, came back and. Um, we stayed there. We rented a hotel, a couple of hotel rooms for, oh, I don't know, a couple, three weeks. Didn't know what to do. And then the vegetable, he moved over to um, Oakland. He got a job over there. And uh, I stayed in San Francisco. And that's uh, that's how that came about. But it was. Uh, yeah, but weren't you was, supposed to check in? What was that deal with the Army? You were... Oh, 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 the um, Yeah, I forgot. Okay. What I what um, I did, I did over two years. As you know, I told you before, we got extended when the. Berlin Wall, Berlin Wall blew up, and um, so I was assigned to a reserve unit out there for I think it was I suppose, six years. But what happened is uh, I would I I uh, signed up for it, but it, they were so crowded uh, with uh, ex uh, uh, servicemen that uh, they didn't need me. So I never had to do any reserve duty, which was great. I didn't have to do the two weeks summer thing and weekends and all that. They just told so, you never mind. They were just like, they, Hey, Lieutenant, just, we're good. They just told me, never mind. We got too many. We don't want you. Yeah. That's Which was crazy. Fun. That's insane. I, I, well, I luck of the Irish, right? <laughs> That's an amazing story. All right, yeah. dad, let's, let's talk about the paintings and, uh, hey, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, uh, of course, of course, of um, course. I'm just uh, wondering, I, we saw the game last night. It was a great game, <clears throat> and uh, I was amazed how they. Well, wait, uh, wait, wait! What game the, did you see? The 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 Nuggets, the Nuggets and, and Lakers. Yeah, Dad, that uh, the game didn't start until 10 p.m. your time. What do you mean you saw the? How did you? We how in the world? The, highlights. the well, we highlights. highlights. Oh, okay. Highlights. Oh, all right, all right. I was gonna M say. M M MPJ had a great game. He did. We saw the highlights. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he did, and okay. uh, it was a special night because of the Kobe Bryant statue, you know. Yeah, uh, and uh, I just uh, and oh, by the way, that was a great interview you had with Chad Brown in Vegas regarding the Hall of Fame uh, selection. Yeah, interesting, uh, huh? The voting process uh, was described. Uh, I, th I thought it was uh, a marvelous review of how these people get voted in. Very good. Very well, good did you interview. know that that these guys actually the older guys or guys who are on the fringe they actually have to actively campaign to get in? Did you even know that? I, I did not know that. Yeah. No, did not. Yeah, that's that's the truth. I mean, there are some guys, and Tom Brady will be one. I mean, it just goes right away. But yeah. for a lot of guys, like oh, I'll I'll give you one, Randy Gratishar. You must remember Randy Gratishar from the Orange Crush when we lived out in Steamboat. I do vaguely. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he just got in. Okay, so think about this for a second. He was a member, Dad, of the Orange Crush when we lived in Steamboat in 1977. He, That's right. He just got into the Hall of Fame, you That's know, a couple a couple days ago. So, oh my God. Um, wow. and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's this wild process where you really do have to campaign for yourself if you're not a slam dunk. But it means a lot to these guys. Um, Oh, of course it does. I can I can understand that. But it's not like anything changes. I mean, you are who you were on the football field, so I don't know. It's a weird process. And you know, Chad is one of those guys who played in the league for 15 years. I so know. so he certainly has the longevity. Um yep. he was not part of a Super Bowl championship team, but he did play in a Super Bowl. They lost against the Cowboys when he played for the Steelers. Right. So yep. he's a really interesting case. Um and I love Chad, so I mean, well, course, it would yeah. mean a lot to him. So, um, well, he's got the history and he's got the tenure, and um, he's got all the sacks. Uh, I hope I'll keep my fingers crossed for him. All right, yeah, he's a great guy. Let, oh, he's he's a tremendous guy. All right, let's talk yeah. about some paintings here, Dad. Okay. And we're gonna start with High Above Zurich. <clears throat> well, okay. I love. Have you actually even been to Zurich? 
No, we never have. No. <laughs> well, I've actually no. been to Austria, and uh, yeah, I know. and you <laughs> haven't. Yeah, you have. yeah. But uh, again, with my dad, the uh, it's abstract painting for the most part, with a, a pinch of reality in there. But yeah. like the 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 purple sky is such a Peter McKee iconic yeah. sort of deal, man. I love that. So talk about this particular painting, Dad. It's beautiful. Well, that sky was mountains beyond mountains. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love yep. it. Uh, well, I'll give you a little history uh, before I tell you about the painting. My brother, Bob McKee, uh, <clears throat> ski raced in two World Cups in 1979 and 1980, uh, representing Ireland during the tours in Europe and the United States. And... And uh, hold on, I got to I got to clear my throat here. Uh, all right. Again, that would be Eileen McKee giving dad coaching advice Sorry, just, just, about I how to a, speak. So that's mom a, telling dad I how to a, talk. I had a, I had to clear my throat. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he, uh, as I said, represented Ireland during the uh, tours in Europe and the United States. They were about five months each year. Uh, he had dual citizenship between the United States and Ireland and was the first uh, and only rep for island that no one ever really did that before and then he wrote a, a story about the adventure called <clears throat> i was the irish ski team right he raced he raced in downhill in <clears throat> giant slalom all right she's really yeah, getting she's getting yeah, at I, you to, I, you I, want I, some water you I, want to take some water or something dad you, you can take some water if you want take your time there's no rush yeah, I'm going to take some water. Yeah, take some. I'll I'll right. fill in some of the d details here. <laughs> so so okay. so I'll fill in some details here. So okay. my uncle, so anyway, dad's brother, uh, Robert McKee, does have dual citizenship in the United States and Ireland. And at the time, there was no Irish ski team. There's no ski mountains in Ireland. Um, right. And at a very late age, and I think he was in his late twenties, but that was old. For the time, 30s. it was in his thirties. Okay, yeah, and his yeah. nickname on the World Cup was Opa, like grandfather. Opa. grandfather and but right. he was friends with uh, skiers like Franz Klammer and Billy Sten Kidd, uh, Ingemar yeah, Stenmark. Stenmark. All yeah. those guys were pals with Bob. So yeah. he actually wrote, and you can look it up. Bob McKee, Robert McKee. I was yeah. the Irish ski team. It's a classic piece. It ran in Ski Magazine, and yeah. it's it's awesome. So we, we was, grew up was, as little kids knowing all about Bob. Oh, I'm sure you do. It was also in a book called The 50 Greatest Ski Teams, Ski Stories of All Time. Right. And uh, that was uh, that was a nice book. But, yeah, he uh, lucky he didn't get killed, really. Um, well, what's that uh, got to do with the painting, though, Dad? What's that got to do well, with the painting? what it's got to do is that um, uh, he, um, his only time during this, uh, the help he had was his wife, Betty. He was really just Betty and my Bob, uh, brother doing all this preparation, moving the uh, equipment around, the clothes, the skis, all this and that. Everywhere. All the other countries have teams of people helping the races collect their materials and going from one country to another and so forth. So, but what, and so and I thought, I've th thought about this for a long, long time. And uh, I've thought about uh, doing a painting. And so what I did was uh, just make this painting so that it looks like uh these little huts up in the mountain of switzerland and that area uh uh just representing the mountains that my brother raced on and so i just did a painting on that it's kind of a semi-abstract and uh i just uh i like doing it it uh, brought back memories and anytime i look at it, i got it hanging up in the in the bathroom i hang it up there and uh, i see it and i think about that it brings me Good man. He's just coming back uh, Sunday from Guatemala. He travels a lot. So. All right, all right. Well, let's stay focused on the painting. We can talk yeah. about Bob another time. Yeah. But okay. it's it's a it's a beautiful painting. It's nice that it has some significance to you with the with your brother who's traveling. You've never been to Zurich, but you can imagine no. things. You don't oh, have to sure. necessarily be at places to sort of imagine what it's like, right? Just right. close. That's that's true. Close yeah, your eyes. True. And what's great is um, you could purchase this painting that you know. My dad has been looking at while he's been taking a shit all these years. So <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, very well put, down. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to uh, Triangle Town. And this is a 2024? Did you yeah, just, just, did you just... I just finished it about two days ago. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. what's going on here then? Two days ago. Goodness. 
Well, uh, the background on this is your mom pointed out to me uh, last year about the popularity of the bright blue color in fashion that uh, we see from everybody that's got uh, shirts, uh, sweaters, um, everybody is wearing what mom calls electric blue. And she suggested that maybe I could do a painting including this color. Mm. <clears throat> so this became my latest painting. And I, as I mentioned, I just finished it and I called it uh, Triangle Town. I made uh, the pyramids. Excuse me, I got to take another. All right, that's away. fine. That's fine. And yeah, lots of color with uh, four different pyramids. Got some circles in there too. And a lot of blue all over the place. Very yeah. bright, very, yeah. I mean, again, my dad loves bright, abstract sort of things. So yeah. are these supposed to be pyramids like in Egypt or is it supposed to represent something else? Well, it's no, well, they they are designed like Egypt, of course, but they're, they're uh, to represent something else. What, uh, what I wanted to do, I made the, um, pyramid uh, shapes in uh, response to the massive housing crisis ah. in this country. Uh, I was thinking about that a lot. I have been thinking about it a lot. And uh, we first I started thinking about uh, Quonset huts. I don't think you remember them, but they were built during World War II, and they were built like a half of a circle. They just round shaped and very easy to put up, and they were uh, a lot of military um, installations used them during the war. And I got thinking about all the military bases that have closed around the country. It's mm. hundreds of them. And I just thought that they're just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. So I spent um, I, I spent two years at Fort Monmouth, uh, New Jersey, when I was in the Army. And I was um, I kind of uh, figured, I don't know what it's called. I heard it was closed or it was closing. But in any case, it was huge, huge. It even had two. 18-hole uh, golf courses, and the fort is just sitting there doing nothing. So I'm thinking, why not build houses in the on the uh, mm. area of these? Uh, ba I don't know how many bases are closed, but I'm sure there's dozens all over the country. <clears throat> and they could use uh, just use triangle housing, built it. They'd be cheap. Just put it on concrete slabs, easy to install. Uh, these would be <laughs> uh, upgraded Quonset huts, uh, different sizes, um, built uh, in factories so they could be easily assembled. And triangles uh, are very easy to assemble on site. And uh, millions could be, uh, millions of these could be built at very low cost, way lower than houses. So these were my thoughts as I painted Triangle Town. Well, wow, that's wonderful. And, you know, it's so funny um, growing up. Well, mom grew up in the city. She she grew up in West right. Roxbury, which was a city, but but a right. pretty big house overall. Um, yeah, huge. And and her mom and dad didn't do anything fancy for work and they had a house and and everybody yeah. had a house. Dad, when you guys were growing up, I mean, literally that's everybody right. had a house. There weren't I mean, if, if you had a homeless person in your town, it was probably just a guy or two, something like that. Right. It, it wasn't like right, that. Right, Everybody had right, a home. Um, right. And now because we're getting ready to sell our home, which we've yep. was always the plan for Kim and I, my wife and I, we were always right. going to do this. Um, and we were always going to do this around this time in our lives to just yep. sort of really, you know, downsize. Um, right. And boy, dad, we have had s such a time just trying to pack everything up 19 years oh, in one. Oh, well, I, 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 I got to give Kim so much credit. She's done the, yeah. the, she's done the lion's share of the work. That's for sure. So I'm very, very grateful for that. But, yeah. but I, I think it's interesting in this world now that you talk to younger people, dad, they never, some people don't think they'll ever own a house. They'll never some, be able to afford it. They'll never own a house. It, it, they've gone crazy in the cost. Yeah, it has. And that's a shame, isn't it? It really is because that's one of the, uh, uh, only ways for people to build up equity over their life. And, well, uh, my intention is to completely fleece whoever wants to buy my place. Ain't no doubt about it. We're, we're not giving any, any discounts dad, oh, but no, no. Uh, the, the value of the home that I live in and the home you live in, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's preposterous of how I much know. our, our, both of our homes are worth compared. And I thought it was a lot at the time when I bought this house back in the day. And I'm sure yeah. you did too. Well, 
Absolutely. 32 Island Park. We had to, you had to finagle a little bit. I don't know if you want to admit what you did, but there, there had to be a, you know, we well, were. We had a finagle to come up with a down payment. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, a lot yeah. of people, like like a lot of people, but at least it was manageable. Now a down payment on houses is something that is almost in the stratosphere to, for people trying to reach. Uh, very hard. You I know, when I look at when I look at Triangle Town too, we're just talking about homes. And the size of the triangles, which, okay, their homes are so large and disproportionate to the surrounding area. And that does feel like, you know, Ipswich is your hometown. And you just see some of these new things developed and you're like, oh, my God, who could live yeah. in these places? How much space do you actually need, right? Well, that's true. You don't need that much. But uh, I'm looking across the, uh, the uh, river here at my place and they built a house about 12 years ago and went up for. 12 uh 10 million dollars golly in costs and the the um the, i had a plumber when working on this house tell me that their plumbing bill was four hundred and fifty thousand. oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> indoor pool and all that you know but uh because god that, god forbid you you live in ipswich the place that you've lived for more than 40 years um without yeah. an indoor pool when you have the <laughs> ocean behind you yeah, you can go out there and swim. Hey, you, you know, you pool. know what we use for a pool, Dad? High tide. That was our pool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, you want to go? <laughs> you want to go for a dip? The the tides in. Go. Yeah, it's hard to swim in the mud. <laughs> you know, I don't know, man, but I I I had a pool, I guess, Dad, growing up, didn't I? I really you did. did. And a boat. And a boat. Know. I had a pool yeah. and a boat. Uh, it wasn't yeah. anything fancy, but I no, mean, you no. know. I always I laugh when, when I say I had a pool, a boat, and a car. My <laughs> pool was when the water came in, and it was a mud pit when the water went out. My yeah. boat was a 15-foot with a 15-horsepower uh, Evan right. Rude. I mean, it wasn't yeah. anything fancy. And yeah, my car yeah. was, was mom's old car, which was like a 79 Pinto. So, yeah, right. yeah. yeah I guess technically I did have a car, a boat, and a pool. But not too bad, not too shabby. <laughs> not too shabby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. And on that oh, note, we'll we'll remind everybody um, that all the paintings are for sale. Inquire in the comments. You get to chat up with Peter and Eileen and have a great conversation. I had no idea about the dice games and uh, dice games and death in Central City. That's fantastic. And um, and always the commentary on life, what it was and what it is now with a painting that was finished just a couple of days ago. I mean, that is right. fantastic, dad. <laughs> so I'm glad, you, I'm glad you like it. Oh yeah, my God. I, I, I loved it. You, uh, you're, you're amazing. And tell mom, I love her too. Well, I love talking to you and give my best to Johnny. Okay. I will. I will. Okay. I love, I love you. Thanks dad. for coming. I All love right. you. Thanks, Thank my you. God. I, I had no idea about the dice game. I had known about the trips to San Francisco and I knew about the vegetable, but d dad tempting death in central city. Who knew? I had no clue. Maybe I'll go there this weekend and look for some sort of dice game. Peter's Peyton podcast. Always something new.